Hey there, fourth grade. It's your bearded buddy, Mr. Remedies here with today's reading mini lesson. Uh, we have talked um, quite a bit recently about nonfiction texts and all the different ways uh, those authors organize it. And remember, last week we talked about how one type of organizational structure is cause and effect. Okay, two BFFs that are never really separated in nonfiction text. Uh, so today we thought we would give you a strategy, give you a little how-to knowledge um, that can really help you un dive in and understand exactly what it is uh, the cause and effect looks like. So today, you see it on your screen, we're learning how to, using a diagram to show cause and effect. So as always, let's head on over to those learning goals and success criteria, see what we're trying to accomplish today. So that way, at the end of the lesson, when we're successful, boom, we can celebrate that success. So today we're learning how to use a diagram to show cause and effect. Uh, we have four success criteria to help you along the way to know that it's firing all cylinders up here in your brain roller coaster, all right? Uh, your success criteria today, I can define cause, because right? you know, spoiler alert, if you can't define cause, it's going to be really hard to use a diagram to show what it is. Two, I can define effect. Three, I can identify the cause of an event. And four, I can identify effects of that event. Oh, that seems like a lot. That's a lot of mental work we got going on today. But you know what? I am 100% confident that all of you across Copper's Cove, Texas, watching me right now, I know. 100% certain that all of you can make this happen today. So let's move on to a couple of little definitions that we really need to hammer home, review, so that way we can move on to the meat of our lesson. Those vocabulary words are, number one, cause, which is the why something happened, and number two, effect, the event that happened afterwards. Okay? So as a quick example, if... I study my vocabulary, what will happen? Well, my writing will get better. So my writing got better is the effect because I studied vocabulary. Boom, cause and effect right there. Right. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's move on to a little bit of um, an example. And I think you're really going to enjoy this example. For the example, we're going to The Promise by Nicola Davies. Right? And you know what? I could sit here and read it to you, but I think, I think it would be much cooler if we actually got the author of the book, Miss Nicola Davies herself, to read it to us. So let's give it a look, just five minutes, and we'll see how we can uh, organize and diagram the cause and effects of this book. When I was young, I lived in a city that was mean and hard and ugly. Its streets were dry as dust, cracked by heat and cold, and never blessed with rain. A gritty yellow wind blew constantly, scratching round the buildings like a hungry dog. Nothing grew. Everything was broken. No one ever smiled. The people had grown as mean and hard and ugly as their city. And I was mean and hard and ugly too. I lived by stealing from those who had almost as little as I did. My heart was as shriveled as the dead trees in the park. And then one night, I met an old lady down a dark street. She was frail and alone an easy victim. Her bag was fat and full. But when I tried to take it from her, she held on with the strength of heroes. To and fro we pulled that bag until at last she said, if you promise to plant them, then I'll let go. What did she mean? I didn't know or care. I just wanted the bag. 
So I said, all right, I promise. She loosened her grip at once and smiled at me. I ran off without a backward look, thinking of the food and money in the bag. But when I opened it, there were only acorns, so green, so perfect, and so many. And I understood the promise I had made. I held a forest in my arms, and my heart was changed. I forgot the food and money, and for the first time in my life, I felt lucky, rich beyond my wildest dreams. I slept with the acorns for my pillow, my head full of leafy visions. And in the morning, I began to keep my promise. I planted beside roads on roundabouts, among rubble, ruins and rusty railings, by train tracks, tram lines and traffic lights, in abandoned parks and gardens laced with broken glass, behind factories and shopping malls, at bus stops, cafes, blocks of flats, I pushed aside the mean and the hard and the ugly, and I planted, planted, planted. Nothing changed at first. The gritty wind still scratched the parched, cracked streets. The people scowled and scuttled to their homes like cockroaches. But slowly, 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 shoots of green began to show. Trees, first here, then there, then everywhere. People came onto the streets to see. They touched the leaves in wonder and they smiled. They took tea together by the tiny trees. They talked and laughed and pretty soon they were planting too. Trees and flowers, fruit and vegetables in parks and gardens, on balconies and rooftops. Green spread through the city like a song, breathing to the sky drawing down the rain like a blessing. But by then, I was already far away, planting in another sad and sorry city. And another, and another, and another. And then, last night, in a lonely alley, a young thief fought me for my bag of acorns. I smiled and made the old bargain, knowing how a heart can change, knowing that my planting will go on. What? Oh, I love this book so much. What a wonderful book. All right. Uh, now that we've watched that video, let's uh, get ready for, boom, a little question time all right my question to you guys what event caused all the other events in the book to happen okay right? this is a great example of cause and effect because hmm, boys and girls there is a clearly clearly defined uh event that makes everything else happen so in order to do that, in order to answer that, let's try to learn how uh, to use a diagram. So this is what a cause and effect diagram looks like. Uh, it is usually made up of two columns. On your uh, left, there is the cause column, and it's green. And then you can tell that it's one event. And then on the right, uh, we got a bunch of effects. Okay? Because that's usually how it goes, okay? Uh, usually one event has many effects, right? Think of it a little bit like tossing a rock in a pond, okay? Well, that one rock, when it hits that water, it creates bloop, 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 a bunch of ripples, okay? And so we want to kind of replicate that, okay? 
So my question, boom, question time. Remember, what one event causes all the other events to happen in the book? Do you remember? If not, you can always rewind the video, but I think you guys got it. Right? Remember, a girl tried to steal a woman's bag, but the woman gave her the bag and made her promise to plant the acorns. That happens at the beginning of the book. Right? And from there, we see, hmm, we see what happens. Right? So, boom. In our diagram, under the cause column, we're looking for that main event... Uh, whether it be of a book or a chapter or a passage that makes all the other events happen. Right? Or we're looking for the uh, central idea that makes other things fall in after it. So, pow, question time to the sequel. What do we got? We got a question. What events happened because the girl tried to steal the older woman's purse full of acorns, what events happened after that? Right? Or not after, but because of that. I'm sorry. Right? So that's when we go back to our diagram and in our effects column, okay, we're going to say what we're going to think. We're going to think back, rewind if necessary, and we're going to come up with the effects. Well, what was the very first thing shortly after the girl realizes what she has. What happened? The text says the girl's heart changed. She realized she had a forest in her hands, right? Uh, something else that happened was the girl planted acorns and the city became beautiful. Right? Uh, another effect was people started smiling because they enjoyed the, uh, the beautiful scenery and they enjoyed what the acorns uh and the trees added to the, the city. Okay. Then it said that be, uh, because she enjoyed planting them in her city, that she moved to different cities and planted trees in other cities. And another effect towards the end, and this is an amazing part, and I love this one so much, it says the girl passes on the tradition to the new thief. None of these effects here in red, none of these happen unless that woman makes the girl promise to plant the acorn she had stolen. Right? So you can clearly see on our uh, diagram that we have a uh, the cause, the main event is um, very easy to understand. And we can see just through some simple lines and some simple boxes what the effects of that event are. Do you notice anything else about my diagram? Ding, 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 ding. If you said, Mr. Remedies, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of details on here. You're absolutely right. When we make diagrams of text, we don't necessarily uh, have to recreate word for word or detail for detail what's in the text. But we kind of want to use paraphrasing. We oftentimes want to shorten down uh, our phrasing and words to just a simple phrase. All right. Man, you guys have done amazing. So let's move on to a review. All right. Uh, today, we learned how to use a diagram to show cause and effect. Remember, that diagram has to have two columns, okay? It has to have an, uh, a cause column, and then it has to have an effect column. Okay? And the cause has to come first. Okay? It has to be clearly defined and easily identifiable. Okay? Uh, remember that we reviewed what a cause is. A cause is any event that makes other events happen. Okay? Uh, an effect is something that happens because of the first event. Okay? It's what happens after that initial event. Okay? And remember, boom, some of y'all geniuses out there, all of your geniuses out there, you realize that uh, it kind of becomes a domino kind of thing that a cause happens and then it has effects and then those effects have other effects and those effects have other effects. And yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. All right. And diagrams, overall diagrams can help us identify cause and effect within the text. I know some of you guys, you like to sketch it out. You like to get a visual of what's going on and diagrams help us with that. Okay. No shame in diagramming out some cause and effect to help you really understand 
to help you summarize a story, and to help you get the best message out of it. All right, that chime tells me it's time to go. I'm Mr. Remedies. You are my fantastic fourth graders all across Copper's Cove. And you know what, guys? I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope you have a wonderful spring break. All right, bye, guys. Have a great day.